Hello, and welcome to ECMAT. Today we're going to talk about factoring fractional exponents when one or more terms are negative. Here's a problem. If you now, this is different than prior problems, of course, because we have negative half and negative three halves. It's similar to prior problems because we have x plus five, x plus five, and we have fractions. Um, now, if you remember the rule from the previous video when we when we did this in class, the secret GCF, the secret greatest common factor, is the term with the smallest exponent. Now, you might think that one half is the smallest exponent. But remember that negative three halves is actually smaller than one half, negative one half. So this term is the piece that we're going to try to factor out of both terms, even though three halves seems larger. Before we go further, I want to remind you again of the exponent rule that if you have x to the a divided by x to the b, that's going to be x to the a minus b. And that's true even if these exponents are fractions and even if those exponents are negative fractions, we're still going to follow that rule and that's going to come into play when we solve this problem. So we'll just keep that little guy right over here because we're going to use it later. Um, so I look at this x minus 5 to the negative 3 halves. Uh, this rule about this being the greatest common factor says that's what I want to factor out. So I'm going to set up my big old bracket. And I need to figure out what goes in here if I pull out this term. Well, I can already fill in in the middle. This minus sign is going to stay a minus sign. There's nothing that's going to change that. That's going to stay. Um, in this, then I'm going to do sort of simulated division. I'm going to pretend that I'm dividing by this entire term. And when I divide by this term, well, everything here reduces to one. So in this case, nothing is left except a one. A lot of people would be tempted to just not write it or write a zero or just say, yeah, it's gone. That's not true. Uh, and if you forget to, to the, uh, get the one in there, you're gonna have an equivalent that wouldn't actually multiply back together if you go to check your answer. Now I'm gonna do the second piece over here. So second piece, I'm going to divide by x plus 5 to the negative 3 halves. I feel like I need to do a separate piece of scratch work over here. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit and do my scratch work on the bottom, make a little room. So if I have, uh, I'm going to just do a substitution. Instead of writing x plus 5, I'm just going to write a to the negative 1 half divided by a to the negative 3 halves. Good old exponent rule over here says that this would be the same as a to the negative one half minus minus three halves. So notice there's a double negative situation going on here. That's gonna be the same as a to the minus one half plus three halves, which is like three halves minus one half, or a to the two halves, which is just a to the first. Well, I didn't have a, I had x plus five, but everything here remains the same, which means when I go down and fill in this box, that's gonna be x plus five. And this is a really cool result because x plus five to the first, it's just x plus five. So let me take this, move it over here, get you out of the way so we can continue the problem. Since that was just x plus 5, I can write this without parentheses, x plus 5 minus 1. Keep that term. And then we group. This 5 minus 1 is 4. Now, when you have a negative exponent, this is, I guess, fine. You've technically accomplished factoring, but it's not really polite. Um, for our class, we're going to consider negative exponents to be impolite. And we also know that we could write negative exponents on the bottom of a fraction. So for a final version of this, a final condensed form, I would actually write it as x plus 4 over x plus 5 to the positive 3 halves as a final form, uh, final version answer. 
And this is a situation where we had something that we weren't quite sure what this is. I know negative exponents are fractions, but I'm not really sure what's going on here. On the other hand, we do this little algebra, we do this work, um, and we get down to something that's actually rather nice, right? I know what a fraction is. Uh, I know what x plus five is. Yeah, there's a square root down there and, and maybe some cubing. That's not really that big a deal. Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, by the way, you optionally can write the bottom as uh, the square root of x plus five to the third under x plus four. Uh, these are fine, both are equivalent. Uh, they mean the same thing, whichever you prefer. I think I prefer the exponent version, um, but you might prefer the root version. So that's how you do a fractional exponent factoring problem. Um, really, it's the same as the one before. You gotta remember that rule about the smallest exponent being the GCF, and notice that we, when we chose the smallest, we ended up subtracting a negative, which made the origin, the other term end up with a positive exponent. If we tried to subtract, get rid of this one, the one half instead, we wouldn't have ended up with a positive exponent in the other term. It wouldn't have worked out that nicely. So that's why we say always follow that advice. Smallest exponent is gonna be your secret greatest common factor for factoring. I'm just gonna do two more examples in here in this quick video. Um, first one, x squared plus three, the negative two thirds, x squared plus three to the negative five thirds, the plus image. So again, following my rule, this guy is gonna need to be factored out because negative five thirds is smaller than negative two thirds on a number line. So I'm gonna give myself some space to do division and I'm gonna set up a bracket. I know that I'm gonna to attempt to factor out this term. And when I figure out what goes inside, the plus sign will remain. When I figure out what goes inside on the right-hand side, I'm just gonna divide it by itself. Oh, hey, look, that'll all reduce. It's the same term on top and bottom. That'll all reduce to one. On the other side, I'm gonna be doing uh, x squared plus three to the negative two thirds divided by x squared plus three, to the negative five thirds to figure out what goes in here. And in this case, I'm not gonna do this division. I am gonna think about uh, a to the negative two thirds over a to the negative five thirds. Well, that would be a to the negative two thirds minus minus five thirds. That's the same as negative a to the negative two thirds plus five thirds. Well, five minus two, that's three. So this is a to the positive three thirds or just one. So this piece over here, it's just gonna be x squared plus three to the one. And so we have a similar situation where things are working out more nicely than we expected with all those fractions up top. Who would have thought that we'd get a, a single exponent of one down here? But how cool is that if we did? Now I'm gonna do, just uh, stop talking a little bit and combine and condense and move that piece to the bottom. I'll show a couple steps and we'll get a final answer. So again, moving, I created a fraction because I turned this negative exponent on this term into a fraction that goes on the bottom of that term. And I just carried this down all the way through. So this would be a really nice final answer for this problem. Again, now is it the most simple? No, um, it's still kind of gross, but it's a whole lot nicer than whatever we had up here before. So that's pretty cool. All right, here's our last one for today. Um, this one's a little more complicated. I actually noticed that there are no fractions. There's only whole number exponents. The same techniques are still gonna work. So I'm gonna attempt to factor out this entire term all to the negative two as my GCF, because I see that I have four X plus threes as like a common base with differing exponents. This entire piece, you might be looking at it and getting a little stuck. Um, this whole thing, is just we're gonna treat it like the coefficient on this GCF, and that's gonna kind of pair up with that eight, almost as if we were factoring by grouping. 
So even though it appears like there's three terms, 10, 5x, and the 4x plus 3, these two are really just going to operate together. You could almost multiply them back together, although I'm not going to. You could think about them as being multiplied together. In this case, I'm just going to stop talking and do the algebra and let you follow along. Feel free to pause at any time and or slow me down and really watch the steps or rewind uh, and just see what the steps happen. where the factoring is complete, but this thing ain't done. Uh, so we're going to simplify this further by multiplying these two binomials out, multiplying that 10 in, and bringing this 8 in and combining all the terms. So I'm going to just kind of uh, stop talking again and speed things up while, you got, while we do that and see what we get. And now we've gone from something with all sorts of negative exponents all over the place to something that's a lot nicer. This is a rational expression. We're going to graph these in a, a later chapter. Uh, it's pretty cool. Now, there might be more simplification you could do, but it feels like at least at this phase, we are done with this problem. We've done enough. Um, we could attempt to factor the top. We could attempt to do some work now that we've grouped 22 in. Um, but I think we're going to leave it here on this one. I'm going to show you one more secret method for doing a problem like problem number two in this video. And the method, the key to this method is fractions. So some folks really like this method, some folks hate it. It really depends on how comfortable you are combining denominators and rational expressions. Um, I kind of like it. Remember that a negative exponent really says make this a fraction. So rewrite this as one over x plus five to the half power minus one over x plus five to the three halves power. We've converted it into an expression with no negative exponents. So in a sense, they're gone. But now we have two completely different fractions and we got to deal with those. Remember that you can't add fractions with unlike denominators. So what we're gonna do, or what we need to do, is get a, a denominator to match. Well, this is the smaller number, right, one half. So what I'm gonna do is try to bring that one half exponent up to match the three halves exponent on the other side. And I know that one half plus one gives me three halves from all the problems we've done before and just general fraction knowledge. So. That means that I can kind of, I do the same trick I do when we're rationalizing. I can multiply by x plus five over x plus five. I'm just multiplying by one, but when I do that, uh, so I'm not changing anything, I'm just doing it to a single term. When I do that, I'm gonna add these exponents and what I will get is x plus five from the top part times one over x plus 5 to the 3 over 2. Carrying down that second term. Now that I have like denominators, right, everything's the same in the denominators, you can add, or in this case, subtract the numerators. So I'm going to do x plus 5 minus 1, and I will get x plus 4 divided by x plus 5 to the three over two, which was the answer from before. So that's one way to do this problem in maybe a more efficient way if you're comfortable with fractions. And you're always allowed to do them this way. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a different interpretation of those negative exponents. We end with the same answer.
Um, I hope this has brought you, oh, that's a little scary. I hope this has brought you a little further of an understanding about factoring fractional exponents, especially when things are negative. It get, can be really confusing. This video was twice as long as the last one. Uh, sorry about that, but it's a really cool thing. People really struggle with it, um, but I think it's neat. It's just a cool thing to be able to do. It really pushes your exponent properties and, and your understanding. Uh, so this has been ECMath. We'll see you guys next time.